Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over the pistol that you see in my hands here and that you saw in the intro. This is the Gen 4 Glock 17 FS, FS standing for front serrations. Um, this is pretty much identical to all the Gen 4 Glocks out there that we've reviewed in the past, but we will touch on that in a little bit later in the review. But first, I kind of want to go over the differences. So uh, you guys, by the way, request that I do more videos out here on the dock, so we're doing them for you. So hope you enjoy the view. Um, anyway, differences, of course, first and foremost, is that it has the front serrations there. The serrations are identical to the ones that are traditionally on the back of Glock pistols. I have no issues with them. They work well. If you want to do press checks, it gives you a good gripping surface to do so. Um, if you don't want to do press checks, then you don't have to use them. That's kind of how I look at it. Um, the only downside I can really see to having forward serrations or front serrations is that they could potentially um, cause problems with leather, leather holsters in terms of tearing up the insides. I don't really see that as a problem though with a gun. It's just something to note. Um, front serrations are something that custom gunsmiths have been doing for at least 20 years now. Um, I believe it originally started when folks were running large optics, particularly competitors, on the back of their guns and couldn't sort of grab on to the rear of the slide, so they put them up there. But now, a lot of people like them for various reasons. So those are there for you if you guys are into that. The next big difference, of course, is going to be sights. So this one here has Glock night sights, which are just the traditional three-dot night sights. Um, but even if you don't order a night sight model, it's going to come with steel sights, and that's huge in my opinion. Uh, Glock traditional Glock sights, the plastic ones are terrible. I have bad mouthed them here on the channel for as long as I've had a channel and off camera, I've been doing it for longer than that. Um, I've seen them break. I've seen them just fall off guns during shooting, uh, particularly the rear sight. They're just terrible sights that, in my opinion, Glock should be embarrassed to release. However, the steel sights are decent sights. They have the standard U in the back that all Glocks have. And then up front, the white dot is actually a little bit larger than the, the traditional one that you'd see on the polymer uh, front sight. So basic same, frights, front, same sight picture though, uh, for those of you guys who, are, who know what that is. I don't have that, so I can't actually give you close up pictures of it, but you just have to take my word for it. It looks like basic Glock sights with a larger front dot, but they're steel. So if you wanna do one hand manipulations or anything like that, um, you don't have to worry about them coming off uh, while doing so, or just when you're shooting coming off. So that's a good thing. Uh, a couple other differences is that it does have the extended slide lock and slide release lever here. I believe Glock actually has a specific name for that. It's not both according to Glock, but according to me it is. Uh, it maintains the function of holding the slide back to verify that the pistol itself is empty and if you want to use it uh, to send the slide home during reloads, you certainly can do so. So it has the extended control on there. Me personally, I hate, hate, hate extended controls. Um, as soon as this video is over, I'm gonna walk back inside my house and pull this off. Um, I know some guys really like them. They like having the larger surface to, I don't know, clear my functions, I guess. That's really the only thing, uh, clearing the double feed that could possibly help with, but I don't like them at all. I have many times in this pistol, as well as others that have them, had accidentally um, engaged them and caused the slide to lock back when I didn't want to, and there's still rounds in the magazine. So for me, with my shooting style, with the size of my hands, um, I just, I don't like them at all, but I realize that some folks do like them, so it does come with that extended uh, lever there if you guys are into that. The last control that it comes with that's a little bit different is our magazine release. Now, um, on Glock's website, it says it's extended. However, uh, looking at it compared to a traditional Gen 4 Glock 17 like we have here, it doesn't appear to stick out much farther, farther rather, maybe a hair. The big difference is that the forward or the front portion of it, it has sort of has a rounded hump that sticks out a little bit further. Um, so if you're coming across and you have large hands and you're kind of hitting the front of it, you will notice an increased area there. Um, but it doesn't really stick out a ton. Like for instance, uh, those of you guys that are used to say a Gen 3 Glock, the 34s uh, versus the 17s where there's a big difference in terms of the length of it. This doesn't really have that. It's got a different shape and maybe, maybe half a millimeter of extra um, length to it. I don't mind it at all. I plan on leaving it on there. I have no problems with it. It works fine. I can actuate the magazine release on a Glock without rotating my hand regardless of the generation or the length of the uh, mag release, but this one, it works fine. I have no issues with it. Like I said, I don't notice it, that it's a drastic change in any sort of way. So those are the big differences between the uh, FS models and the standard Gen 4 Glocks. As with all Gen 4 Glocks, you have some things going for it that are pretty cool. So number one, you get interchangeable back straps. You get two uh, medium and two large. One of them is gonna have a beaver tail grip like we have on here. I personally like that. I like to jam my hand up as high as possible. And again, I have relatively large hands. So 
it does prevent slide bite if you have really meaty hands. So that's something I certainly like. I've I see no reason not to do it if you like the circumference of it. However, with the Gen 4 pistols, you can actually remove that and just run it flat with no extra um, backstrap on there. And that's going to give you a little bit um, narrower grip than you would get with, say, like a Gen 3 or a Gen 2 clock. So people with small hands, a lot of those folks, those folks really like the Gen 4s for that reason. Uh, the Gen 4 grip also has a very good gripping surface in my opinion. It's not as aggressive as say like an RTF2, which I personally like, but a lot of people don't. And it's not as slippery as a Gen 3 or a Gen 2 Glock would be. Um, it just, it does stick to your hand, but it's not gonna like abrade your clothing or your seatbelt or anything like that. If you guys carry these for work or concealed carry or anything like that, it is comfortable against the skin. I, I think Glock, did something right with the Gen 4 texturing. No issues there at all. Before moving on with the review, I know you guys are gonna ask me if I don't say it, what holster we're using. This is the uh, Safari Land ALS holster. It is a retention holster. So it has this little thumb break here where you actually grab it with your thumb like so. You have to push down on it and that will release it. Otherwise, it will be retained in there. So that's how you do it. Um, it's a very good holster, at least so far as I can tell, particularly for the cost. These things are relatively, relatively inexpensive and they seem to work but anyway i just wanted to get that out of the way because if not my comment section will be full of what holes are you using so that is it and we'll put a link down below for you guys again with all generation four glocks you're going to get three magazines that come with it for those of you guys that live in free states uh, you're going to get 17 round mags so three of them with this pistol for those of you guys that live uh, under tyranny you're going to get 10 rounds with it so they do make both they do offer both and either way you're going to get three mags with it so that certainly is a good thing you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of extra mags like some pistols that only come with one or even the old generation three glocks that come with two three is better than two in my opinion so that's certainly a good thing uh, the finish on it just touching on that, these I believe are all made in 2017. Uh, if you guys are watching this later on, 2017 or newer. Um, so Glock finishes over the years have been something that people really kind of debate out there. I've been buying Glocks for a couple decades now at least, and uh, I've seen the evolution myself. This one here has a pretty good finish on it. It looks uh, sort of matte, shiny but not as shiny as some of the old Gen 3s used to be, but not as matte as some of the early Gen 4s were. Uh, many of you guys know the early Gen 4s had some finish issues in terms of wear, um, at least wear that showed up. Now these are a um, melanited or nitrocarburized um, finish on there, so it's gonna be very good at holding up to the elements. And even if you see what looks like wear on the surface, i.e. the black coming off that uh, salt bath nitride that these get, um, is a surface or rather it penetrates the surface of the steel so you're still getting the protection the corrosion resistance the hardness and all that stuff so very good finish overall i, I really don't have any issues with it i know folks always ask about glock pig nose uh, this one does not have it um, other ones out there may it's just one data point if you will so um, glock 17s are great guns uh, great reliability wise this one here has never had a malfunction we've ran it with mostly minute man munitions uh, 115 grain stuff it's a relatively light target load it, cycles it just fine. That's what you see throughout the majority of the shooting scenes here. We ran a couple mags of the uh, Federal G2 170 or 147 rather 170 that'd be heavy 147 grain loads through it. Again zero issues exactly what you'd expect from Glock. Um, so that's certainly a good thing. Very easy to disassemble, maintain the trigger pull on Glocks. Particularly the Gen 4s was something that people didn't like at first. I don't mind Glock triggers at all. I don't have any aftermarket ones on any of my serious use Glocks. Um, basically, you're going to get a break right around 5.5 to 6.5 pounds. Um, making sure it's empty again. Uh, point in safe direction, you're going to have a little bit of take up, a little bit of slop in there. And then you're going to hit a wall and you have a break, right? It's not super clean like it would be with, say, like the HK uh, VP9 or the PPQ or some of the Canic TP9 series. But it's very usable and uh, really most proficient shooters should be able to shoot Glocks very well with the factory triggers, at least in my opinion. So cost-wise, these ones here, the FS versions, are generally going to be, from what I've seen looking around out there, somewhere $30 to $60, um, more expensive than just their uh, Gen 4 counterparts. I picked this one up over at GT Distributors. We'll put links for those looking for it. Um, but they sell blue label as well as, uh, you know, regular Glocks out there to regular civilian folks. So whether you're somebody who's a first responder and is eligible for the blue label price or somebody who's not, um, they sell them either way. So that's where we picked it up. And again, generally speaking, you're going to see them for 30 to $60 ish more than the Gen 4 counterparts. So overall, 
my thoughts on it is that um, I really like Glock 17s. They're some of my favorite pistols out there on the planet. Um, they're ones I absolutely do trust, of course, once putting a bunch of rounds through them. I like the feel of them. I've kind of grown up shooting Glocks, if you will. So some of the things that some folks don't like about them, I don't even notice because it's kind of what I know, if you will. But the grip angle is a little bit weird. Some people don't like the hump but they work and once you get used to them they will uh, serve you well so long as you uh, do your part as the shooter so it's a nice lightweight gun particularly for the size of it for a full-size duty gun that you get 18 rounds in it's one of the lighter options out there which i certainly do like um again the sights were one thing I always criticize with Glock, so it is good to see them offering steel sights. And I would, I honestly would like to see them do that across the board. They should never produce another plastic sight model, in my opinion. If, if Glock asked me, which they certainly don't, <laughs> that's what I would tell them. But it's a step in the right direction. It's a continuing evolution in the Glock. Now, of course, many of us would like to see some of the improvements that the 17M and the 19M have. Um, and that's just for those that don't know basically removing the finger grooves and it has some internal stuff as well but a lot of people want to see those finger grooves eliminated i personally don't care at all about the finger grooves they tend to fit my hand maybe that's why uh, if they don't fit your hand it may be something that you don't like but um i think it'd be cool if they released this with the 17m grip the mos plates and maybe a threaded barrel i think that would be a hit so if you are listening, Glock, that's my recommendation for you. If you guys are looking for a Gen 5 Glock to release and be up all on the uh, gun mag covers of, that would do it. I'd be willing to bet. But that's it. That is the uh, 17 FS pistol here. If you guys have any questions, you can always post down below in the comment section. You can always post over at my Facebook page. As always, that is, generally speaking, the best way to get in touch with me. I don't always see the comments these days on YouTube with their new little system, uh, but I tend to see them over on Facebook. So either way... Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you're new to the channel here and you just found this through a search um, and you like what you see, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Either way, we'll see you guys in the next video.